Hi guys and welcome back, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make these ghosty brownies, let's begin. To get started on the recipe you'll want to grab yourself a large mixing bowl and into the mixing bowl place your melted butter followed by the cocoa powder and then whisk the two together until they are well combined. The mixture should be smooth and glossy. You can then go ahead and add in the sugar and whisk this in until it's fully incorporated. You will notice a change in the consistency of the mixture at this point. Don't worry, it's completely normal. Once it's been incorporated, you can then add in all of your eggs and vanilla and whisk until everything is fully combined. You will notice that the mixture is less granular and much looser and this is due to the addition of the eggs. Then add in your flour, followed by your chocolate chips. Then mix everything in or fold it in until it's fully incorporated, being careful not to over mix at this stage as otherwise it will ruin the brownie batter. You can then go ahead and grab your lined tin or tray and pour your brownie batter into it, spreading it out and leveling it out as best as you possibly can. This will just help with the consistency of baking. So as an optional topping for the brownies, you can go ahead and take some white chocolate or caramelized white chocolate spread, which just comes in a jar, warm it up and add a small amount of food coloring to them. I recommend using paste or gels rather than the liquids as the liquids will just ruin your chocolate completely. But then just mix until you have a solid color, place dollops on top of the brownie batter. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. As you can probably tell, it didn't leave much space for the green, so the green was all pretty much around the same area. So you just place it randomly in dollops as big or as small as you'd like. Then you can go ahead and take a blunt knife or a butter knife and just swirl the chocolate around into the brownies until you're happy. So once the brownies have been baked, you can go ahead and remove them from the oven. And while they're still hot, I like to sprinkle over some of these Halloween sprinkles. Again, it's not necessary, but just adds a bit more of a Halloween or spooky element than it had before. So again, it's optional, but I wanted to. Then I use these chocolate ghosts that you can get from the supermarket and just place them on top. So each one of these will be a portion. So feel free to use as many or as few as you'd like. So once the brownies are cool, you can then place them into the fridge. This will make them easier to slice. So the following morning, I remove mine from the fridge and then it makes it much easier to cut up. Here are what they look like up close. You've got all the swirls of the color. You've got the chocolate ghosts and you've got them Halloween sprinkles. To cut them up, I've got eight portions, but feel free to cut it into as many or as few. Again, it's really up to you and how many people you are making these brownies for. I was just making a batch and I was gonna share them with friends and family. So I just made eight and they gave eight generous portions. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more from me and I'll be back again very soon with another recipe, so join me then. In the meanwhile, don't forget to check out the description, there'll be a link to this recipe, a link to my blog and links to all my social media, so don't forget to go and follow me over on there. But that's all for today, I hope you enjoyed. Bye guys.